Hello and welcome back. We have a special guest, Miss Gorley. Hi, Miss Gorley. Hi, Miss Jerry. I'm glad you're here. Happy to be here. Yeah, we finally get to merge Spanish and art together. Which we've been wanting to do for a long time, so. Exactly. We almost had our rooms together last year. We thought yes. that we were going to be like this duo all the time, and then. And, and then, then they can fully separated us, so. No. So here we are, finally. Virtually, we get to be together. <laughs> Done. Um, and so this week, we are talking about one of your favorite artists, mm -hmm. Diego Rivera, right? Uh-huh. Do I sound like I'm from Kansas City, Missouri when I pronounce that? Yeah, because it's also just Diego Rivera, not Riviera. Yeah, no. Just Rivera. <laughs> so I never took Spanish. Sorry. You're a German I wish student, I right? would have. I know. I told you. I took German because my friend wanted me to take German, and now I wish I took Spanish. So I'm going to um, just have you pronounce everything. Okay. Or just it. like, I'm going to just say it, but then you can just fix it. Fix it. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so let's learn about him. Diego. Can I just say Diego? Is that better? Yeah, Diego's good. You're good. There we go. Can't mess that up. You're good. Here he is, Diego. He's just... He's a nice, thin man. <laughs> He's a nice, thin man. And I had to add in him and Frida. I like this picture. I don't I do know too. what he's doing with his face. Yeah. <laughs> and she's and sticking her tongue out or something I don't I'm assuming they're laughing I don't know most of the pictures of the two of them they're really serious yeah and I was bored and then I saw this one and I was like all right like I, I don't know that I've actually ever seen that picture like I've seen a lot of pictures of them together and that one doesn't look familiar so good find I like it. yeah I was searching their Facebook profile don't worry okay That's their Instagram <laughs> Especially since he was born in 1886. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then he died in 56. So he was 70. Um, and I think Frida died like 30 years prior to that, like 27 years or something prior to that. Yeah. Um, and so he is a Mexican painter. He was born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and he's really known for his murals, his fresco murals. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you've seen some of those in person. I have. Yes. I have not, so you'll have They're to incredible. Watch. They're awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so he was born in Mexico, but then he actually lived in Europe for a really long time. Um, and I think that's where the fresco part came from. So fresco is like a stucco that you put on first, um, and then you paint on top of. It's like a plaster kind of surface. And that's what the Renaissance artists, like your Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles, your Leonardo da Vinci and all of them used to do. And so it was really popular in Europe. So I'm assuming that's why he did that kind of mural. It's from Europe. And in using that fresco, it like puts the paint into the wall. Like, so it, it doesn't like wear as easily and all because it's not painted on top of the plaster. It's like in the plaster as it's drying and stuff. Correct? Am I correct on this? Mm -hmm. Like, Here yeah. Goes. Yeah. So it's like a much longer lasting impression and all because it's painted into the actual wall. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. It's things like yeah. the Sistine Chapel are created with that kind of technique. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I feel like it's a lot less common with Mexican artists For or sure. with yeah. like American artists in general. It's definitely like a European born thing. And so interesting that he took that upon himself. Yeah. So, pretty cool. He was married multiple times. We'll get into that, but he's Famous for being married to Frida Kahlo, who's one of my favorite artists of all time. And mine also. I love her, too. <sighs> With the cute little unibrow and the tongue yeah. sticking out. Yep. So much. Like, we need to do a week on Frida Kahlo because her life is insane. Is insane. And their life together was crazy, too. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. We need to just go in and, like, research some of the letters that they had back and forth it was I have a book of uh, Frida love letters love letters that Frida wrote to Diego yeah oh my gosh they're all in Spanish but they're really cool <laughs> well darn now I know why I haven't read it <laughs> no 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 okay I'll I'll work on it. let me get my Duolingo going got it <laughs> um so like give us a little taste of their relationship uh, super tumultuous would be like the number one term I would use. So it was very, um, 
I don't know the right terms to you. Tumultuous is the number one. They had a lot of, both of them have a, had a lot of extramarital affairs. Um, he actually slept with her sister, which- Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, is a no-no. Um, and so they were actually separated. I'm not sure if they were divorced and remarried. I think they were just sep like just separated multiple times through the relationship. Um, but they were very on again, off again. So, um, and their age gap between them was like 21 years or something like that. So they had a large age gap. They actually met for the first time when she was, I think, 12 or 13. And he was like almost 40 or something. They were not dating then. Um, but he was painting a mural at her school for what would be like a middle school. And that was the first time that they met. So... And he was at that point a very famous muralist and artist already. So she like looked up to him when she met him, like, wow, this incredibly famous artist is here. And then, but she was like 12 or 13 at the time. So yeah. I did not sketchy. know yeah. some of that. And yeah. this is like a new level of disturbed. That's yeah. something, but that's like the juice that I really get into. So yeah. holy cow. There's a lot of juice with the two of them, but yeah, they're not totally school appropriate, but you know, <laughs> they were a little wild. <laughs> they were a little wild. Yeah. All right. All right, Diego. Yeah. Whatever, bud. Okay. <laughs> um, so back to the art part of it. Yes. So he was famous, like his subject matter for most of his murals and his paintings mm -hmm. um, were just about Mexican society in general, the Mexican revolution. Um, he had very strong political opinions mm -hmm. that I wasn't, I didn't really put in here as much. Um, so if you're interested, go kind of research what he thought, but he worked a lot of that into his work. That was yeah. the main subject matter. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't really know that much about the Mexican revolution, I'll be honest. I mean, I don't either, but. <laughs> okay. I, <feel> better. <laughs> I mean, very baseline knowledge, but. Okay. I feel so much better now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here are just some examples of his work. You said you've seen this one, right? Yeah. So the bigger mural there, kind of in the middle, I've seen in person. It's in Mexico City. Um, it's in the National Palace and it's on the second floor. So you can see those stairs kind of leading up to the second floor. This is the main part of it, but it stretches the entire floor of the second floor. Um, and there's individual murals along the walls that depict, it's called the history of Mexico and it depicts like, the entire history of Mexico, um, just from beginning to when he painted this, which I think was in like the forties at some point. Um, interesting fun fact related to our fun facts from earlier. Yeah. Um, Frida is painted on this mural but also, guess who else? Her sister. So, yeah, little known fact. Um, when we went and visited this, we only got like, I don't know, 25 minutes or something to see it. And it is massive. And I was so stressed out because I was like, I want to see every detail. Because every time you look, you're like, oh my gosh, something else. It's almost like a Where's Waldo of like, you know, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that part of the scene. And so it's, it's just huge. And it's, um, it's one of the coolest pieces of art I've ever seen in person is that mural because it's just like, it's overwhelming, like how big it is and how much there is to see. So yeah, that dog putting her sister in there too. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So yeah. Yeah. She made it onto the mural. <laughs> so Part of this is the fact, like you said, it's huge and there's so many details. And even just looking at it, like you don't know where to look. There's a million portraits, which first off, anyone who's an artist um, knows like portraits are not easy. Like this is not, like this is a little bit more challenging. And so he's got all these people and figures everywhere and then all these other details with it. And then knowing that not only is it this huge thing that you're saying it goes even further, but he also is using that fresco, so that like plaster. And so he can't just like paint on top of stuff. He has to like work it into everything. Right. Holy cow, that's a lot of work. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I, I could make up a number, but I don't remember. But it took him years to paint yeah. it. Like, yeah, it was yeah. a long process because it's huge. Wow. Well, here are some more examples. Um, I think this one was part of like a big Detroit. Yeah, that was at like the Ford 
factory or something. It's depicting, yeah, like industrialized. It was through the, it was painted in Detroit. Yes. As you said. So. I think it was at, and, and I may be wrong, but I think it was at like a, a fine arts university of some kind had commissioned him to do like a bunch of big ones for them. Yeah. Um, and he did these pretty quickly because I think he had to do it within like a certain span of time. Time frame, yeah. Yeah, but um, which is impressive, but holy cow. Um, so these are just some examples. Here, I just think it's cool to see him working. Mm -hmm. You can see his sketches and everything and um, prepping. He's just, look at that hair. I know, I know. Just everything. He's an interesting <laughs> guy, very interesting guy. <laughs> We know why Frida and the sister were just all about it. I know. I mean, who wouldn't <laughs> fall in love, right? I know. Sorry, Mr. Gorley, but yeah. here's Diego. Diego. Love, him. <laughs> love him. Okay. And so then something that always pulls up in a lot of his paintings and just um, a common theme are these calla lilies. Interesting. Mr. Gorley. Miss <laughs> Caligorly is yes. potentially why you chose the one that you chose. Maybe so. I uh, because my name my name is Calla, my first name, and because it was not common growing up, like I could never get a magnet that's a Calla on it or a keychain that's a Calla, and so Calla lilies became like, oh my gosh, like this is me. This is a representation. <laughs> so like. My whole life I've loved the flower, the calla lily, just because that was like, you know, my thing that, oh, this is my name. Yeah. So I love Diego for that reason. That's one of the reasons that I love him so much. <laughs> Use them all the time. Now, have you ever looked up why he uses the calla lily or do you have any ideas? He doesn't actually like flat out say that I could find. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. I know that they have them in Mexico, but I don't know why specifically he identified with that flower. So. Yeah. I, I mean, and I, I still don't necessarily know either. Um, but I think some of it, and here's the one that we focused on this week, your, mm -hmm. your favorite, right? Yep. Um, but ugh, gosh, something about it being representing certain parts of like the Mexican culture because uh -huh. it was a more popular flower um that grew very easily right um but yeah I didn't know if you had any additional insight into that since that's your flower but I I don't I know that it grows there and it doesn't <laughs> grow everywhere but I don't know the exact reasoning yeah I read some hearsay because it's really popular with weddings and it's really popular with funerals Mm. Um, and it's popular with weddings because the shape of it looks, is supposed to like mimic a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. And then it's popular with funerals, I think, because of the shape of it is supposed to mimic something, I think like something with like an angel, um, as well. Um, and so they didn't know if maybe Diego was like playing on like, this is like supposed to be really, um, important and make a big yeah. impact. And so I want to, yeah. I don't know. Um, but he always uses that flower. So clearly and he, he uses just... them. He uses them in white typically also because calories come in lots of colors, but he typically, I feel like I only ever see them in white. So I don't know if there's some kind of symbolism in that as well. I don't know. But. He probably just, he loved you. He didn't know you, but he loved you. And he just knew. Yep. He just knew. That was the plan all along. <laughs> okay. So how do you pronounce this? name. So it's El Vendedor de Alcatraces. Oh my gosh, you should do all of this in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so an Alcatraz is the name of like Calilis and Alcatraz in Spanish, which the singular version of Alcatraz ends in a Z, which is like Alcatraz. That's what it right sounds there. like. Yeah. yeah, so that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so the name of the flower is Alcatraz. That's kind of edgy there. I like yeah. it. Cool. So they translated it according to the article I found to Calla Lily's vendor, but I, is that actor yep. that you think? Yep. Vendor yep. of Calla Lily's. Yep. Cool. Okay. So it's depicting a native Me Mexican peasant woman carrying an enormous basket of Calla Lily's preparing to begin her day at the flower vendor. So that's what um, Diego has said, like that is what it's supposed to depict. Mm -hmm. So that's why we actually mention it in here. Um, however, 
you can see the person behind it. Do you have any theories on this guy back here? No. It, what's interesting is that I had a print of this in my room from when I was really small, like really tiny. And I had several prints of um, Calla Lily paintings in my room, and this was one of them. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's because it's in the background. I truthfully, completely honest, I don't think I even realized that there was <laughs> someone else back there until years after it had been in my room. I think just because you almost don't see it. Like you focus on the lady in front and you almost don't notice that there's someone behind her appearing to help her. But like, truthfully, it's something that it doesn't stick out to me as the first thing that I notice when I look at it. And so I don't have any theories now, but I see it says here, maybe yeah. Diego yeah. is the one holding it. I don't know. Yeah. Like somebody's appearing to lighten her load and she's this, you know, working class. And so right. Diego himself, tried to bring a lot of attention to the fact, to the working class. Right. And right. so it's kind of like him appearing to lighten the load. That's a theory. We, I, yeah. he did not actually come out to say that, but I am the same way. I did not see it until, um, until this week, until you picked it out. Cause I've seen yeah. this painting a million times. Um, and I was familiar with it and I, and I know Diego, but, um, but I think almost just because the color matches. Right. Um, and then even within the basket, like this almost yeah. could be some kind of roping on the basket. This could be anything. You can't really tell. Right. And then the feet, it doesn't make sense, but it's right. almost like maybe her feet were like folded or something. Well, like, that's what I think I always interpreted them as her feet somehow, which doesn't yeah. make sense. And then the hands, you just don't even notice because it looks like it's part of the basket almost. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't so, think I ever, as a kid, realized that like there was someone else in the painting. But. Well, here we are. We figured it out. Yeah. Um, crazy thing, though, is looking and reading through discussions from students this week, uh, most of them figured it out right away. Yep. See, they're smarter so, than I was as a kid. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, yeah, we'll get there. It's fine. So Miranda... Um, she did a really nice job describing it. I'm not going to read all of that, but mm -hmm. she said, I think the woman appears stressed out and tired, which makes sense because it's laboring, um, right. working class, but we'll continue to carry the flowers. I think the man in the back could be representing possibly, possibly a hidden struggle that she has that her flowers cover. Hmm. That's my nice insight, Miranda. I like that. I know, right? We have yeah. lots of really good ones like this. Yeah, great. Um, most people touched on the guy in the back. So I love It's interesting it. that they note that and we didn't even see that it was there. So <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's amazing. Um, Olivia C. also describes the piece and then says the colors aren't um, as rough on the eyes. They are soft and realistic. So I liked how she picked out the colors. Yeah. White is often associated with purity and innocence, goodness. You even mentioned like he usually uses white. Yeah. Um, the person helping her may be trying to help her continue, keep her innocence mm -hmm. and goodness, even though the basket continues to get heavier with each piece of innocence she has. So with each calla lily that's on there. These kids are getting deep. I know. They're Ooh. smart. I know. So I really like those interpretations. Yeah. Um, as we're finishing up, I have some fun facts for you. So we'll see. Fun Fact Friday. Fun Fact Friday. <laughs> um, also, just go ahead and like and subscribe while you're watching this. Yeah, I'm go ahead. Like, subscribe. Um, add me on Snapchat, whatever the things are. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But um, don't watch Snapchat this one it. more than we watch Mr. Bundes's one. Yeah. You can Great also watch Miss Jackson's one a lot, too. But yeah. um, Mr. Yep. Bundes is convinced that he's going to have the most views. And so... Don't let I'm him win. Just watch this 12 times with us. Okay. <laughs> um, so fun fact. So he actually had a twin brother. Sad. Maybe this isn't a fun fact, but his twin brother died when he was like two. So I didn't know that. Okay. I researched. I learned this week. Um, I did mention he lived in Europe. So he actually lived in Paris for 14 years, um, pretty early in his career. Um, before he moved back to, he kind of went between Mexico, but then was really in like Mexico City um, in the U.S. a lot. 
he actually, so part of why he became as famous as he is, is he befriended the founding director of the MoMA, so of the Museum of Modern um, Art. And that's handy. Yeah, right, that helps. <laughs> So he ended up living in New York and um, having like some exhibits and things in the MoMA a lot. And so, yeah. oh, smart. Convenient. Yeah. See what you did there. Um, kind of weird. He had a brief cubism um, spell, I guess. There yeah. was like four years where he did nothing but cubist art. So the same thing that like Picasso was doing Here's one of his up here, really similar to Picasso, Cezanne. Um, I didn't know that until Was I that reviewed. during the time he was in Paris, I wonder? Yeah. So okay, that makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so into, we already kind of touched on his personal life. This is like the juicy stuff. So he had numerous marriages and children. Um, he only had one son who actually passed away, but then he had many other little girls. Here's one. Um, and I couldn't find out how many, so, all right. He may not know, truthfully. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, Frida Kahlo was actually his fourth wife. Okay. Wild. And, and apparently the sister was um, not an actual wife, but also yeah. involved. Um, and then after she died, he married one more time. So he had a fifth wife and it was actually his agent. Okay. So yeah, it's a little bit of a player. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, this was the craziest thing. So I'm reading through and he's got an autobiography. I put it up here. This is what it looks like. Um, and there's like a brief part in the autobiography where he, refers to himself as a cannibal. He says that he likes to eat human brains. Okay. We don't right. know if that's true. I, I mean, I, I hope not. More And like, there's no evidence to say like, yeah, like, what? Um, but yeah. he said it himself about himself. And then he goes into like this deep metaphor about how he like to become a higher human, he has to first, I don't know, eat other people. I don't, I don't know. Just so All right. weird, but I just thought I'd throw it in there. Wow, okay. That is a fun fact for Fun Fact <laughs> Friday, if ever I've heard one. Uh, interesting. I never have heard that before, so. Yeah, usually when I hear, like, crazy stuff like that, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, like, continue this um, gossip. It almost feels like gossip when it's something wild, but he wrote it about But himself. if he wrote it, I, I feel as though he wants people to talk about it, so, so here, here we, we are. are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Interesting. <laughs> Okay, so one last thing before I let you go. Um, his name was a little bit longer. So here it is. Um, All right. And copied and pasted it in here for you. And I was wondering if you could pronounce his full name for us. I can do that. So we have Diego Maria de la Concepcion Juan Nepomuceno Estanislao de la Rivera y Barrientos Acosta y Rodriguez. A mouthful. <laughs> that would have taken me 20 minutes to get through. <laughs> it's interesting. There's a lot of, I mean, uh, artists, well, there's a lot of people that have these lengthy long names that you don't realize. Like Pablo Picasso's name is significantly longer than, than you realize. So yeah. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. <laughs> Spanish teacher of the year. You got, got my it. Vote. All right, everybody watch, share, like, like subscribe <laughs> if we get enough likes and subscriptions maybe i'll convince mr gorley to do one of these <laughs> and we can all start a youtube channel okay perfect this is our new new course, okay I guess. but yeah okay, i like well, it thanks for joining hey thank you for having me that was fun and have an awesome awesome week i will you do the same okay thanks guys I'm gonna stop recording.